Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now nah, worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Digging a hole, it's much bigger than yours because yours is smaller than mine, and that's why mine is bigger. Straighten up, Barney. You've got a backbone. Use it. Don't slouch. Okay. Although I don't see what the big deal is. You don't see what the big deal is. You rely on your backbone. Without it, you wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Without a backbone, you wouldn't be able to lie in that hammock. Or swim! Yeah, not at all irritating, Jeb. Oh, cool. Or bend over like that. Nope, you couldn't even do that without a spine. Oh, look, OK, OK. I get it. Wow, without a spine or a backbone, you'd just be really floppy. Let me get something straight. We've got a backbone, we call it a spine. Without it, pretty useless, a bit like a sea slug. Oh, sea slugs aren't useless. Like many spineless ocean creatures, they've got amazing ways of getting around and surviving. In the ocean, no spine is no problem. I'm intrigued. Well, let's meet our floppy, fishy friends and find out who is completely spineless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a squirt. A squirt? No way. Oh, yes, officially known as the sea squirt, our first invertebrate or animal without a backbone. What does it do exactly? Well, not much, to be honest. It just stays in one spot for its whole life. It's got no spine. It doesn't do anything. It's a lazy squirt. Reminds me of someone. <laughs> well, actually, as it happens, you're onto something there, Jem. I am kind of related to him, but then so are you. What are you talking about? OK, this creature may look like the most basic of all creatures, but according to evolution, there is a big family tree that goes back millions of years. And on this tree, humans are related to the sea squirts. Huh? Yeah, when they're babies, they have a little spinal cord, which puts them in the same family tree as us. Although they do eat it when they become adults. What? what, what? Hang on a second. I don't know which I find the strangest. The fact we're related or the fact they eat their spinal cord. And their brain. And their tail. Ugh, that is disgusting. Mm. Makes you want to puke, doesn't it? When they become adults, they settle in one place by kind of gluing their heads to one spot on the reef. And they don't need their spinal cord, tail or brain anymore, so they just, well, eat them, wouldn't you? It's a bit like a reef takeaway. Well, they take it away from themselves. So, before they do this, they have similarities to us, like a brain and a spine, and that's why we're related. Yeah, it's a strange fact of nature that sea squirts are closer cousins to us than creatures like the octopus or the jellyfish. Yeah, but there's not much squirting action. I want my money back. So, which creature is connected to our spineless sea squirt, I wonder? <laughs> OK, here's our next spineless wonder. <laughs> this is a member of the sea cucumber family. Hold the phone. I have never seen a cucumber this long. He's about seven metres. Well, that's taller than a giraffe. Huh? OK, where's he gone? Oh, look at this for something straight out of Harry Potter. He's gone from the longest long thing in the world to something that looks like a cucumber. Well, they may look a bit useless, but their flabby, spineless body allows them to crawl about and extend or shrink the muscles in their body extremely fast, which squeeze fluids round, in the same way a water balloon would move if we squeezed it in our hands. They're still a bit slow. You'd be surprised. They can be quite energetic when they want to. They eat all the time and, uh, 
process their food within one hour. So just like the sea squirt, the cucumber has no spine and no armor, but somehow they still manage to survive. Super softies. The sea squirts and cucumbers are connected because they have no protection. OK, time to move on. <laughs> As requested, on to our next spineless wonder. Oh, snails. Get a move on, mate. We haven't got all day. Hey, give them a chance. They haven't got a spine, remember? Pull the other one. They are just so slow. So? They still move, don't they? They've only got a small floppy body and they have to carry around that big shell. Well, then why don't they choose something smaller, though? Because they need protection. Their shell is like their own 24-hour bodyguard. Cool, huh? Uh, I'm not sure. All right, well, this will wake you up. This cone shell is one of the most venomous mollusks in the ocean. All aboard! Oh, I like him. He just lassoed that fish. See, you're so quick to judge. They may be slow, but they know how to look after themselves. They find the best armour and spine or no spine, they're sorted. OK, fine, you win. So the snails are pretty squishy too, like the sea cucumbers, but at least they have a shell for protection. Soft bodies is the connection between these two spineless creatures. OK, well, you won that one, but I have got a much better spineless shell. Check him out. <laughs> Bonjour, I am the flame shell. I am red like a flame with my wild, flowing, messy locks. Ooh la la. Bunny, Bunny, where are you? Oh, Bunny, you hot shell. Come here. <gasps> There you are. I need to be alone. Do not touch me. Oh la la, this is so romantic. Mwah, mon chéri. Uh, stop sticking to me. <gasps> no, you mess with my hair. That I cannot forgive. No, ah. Bunny, come back. Ah. No. Uh, Jem. Yeah. Flame shells aren't French, are they? Uh, no. No, but they are reclusive by nature, so that second flame shell there was very persistent. And again, they're soft-bodied animals that rely on their shells for survival. But because they can't close their shell properly, they do tend to be shy. So it's hide away or be eaten. All right, I have to admit it, that was a pretty impressive shell. Yes, I think it's fair to say it definitely beats your snail, Jeff. Our flashing flame shell is, of course, connected to the super slow marine snails because they both live in France. Uh, I mean, shells. <laughs> and who's connected to the flame shell? Ah, Hermie the Hermit Crab. He looks a bit naked. Looking for his shell, no doubt. Ah, oh, home sweet home. Peace and quiet. Oh, phew. Uh-oh, not so peaceful. He's being crab attacked. crab attacked. One shell. Two crabs. Who will be the victor? And claim the end prize. Crab Wars! Heroic Hermit Crab is hiding from this ferocious sand attack. Great sand throwing technique, but is it working? I think Heroic is staying put. He knows when to stay down to survive. Having survived the sand attack, he's back on his feet. He's a tough cookie, this one. He won't be giving that prize away easily. Oh, and Combat Crab is going for the back attack. Heroic is showing immense strength carrying both him and Combat. That is quite amazing. He's steadying himself and... Oh, he's going for the tip! Combat Crab just won't let go. It's an amazing feat of willpower and strength by the little guy. He's not giving up, though. Oh, and what a turn up! He's thrown him off with a spectacular move. What strength, what agility. Combat claims the grand prize of the white shell. Yeah. Leaving our loser, Heroic, with a poor consolation prize. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Contender 2 really has got the booby prize of a bit of abandoned pipe. Poor guy. He put up a brave fight, but he's not looking too comfortable. 
I think he's been driven round the U-Bend. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's just starting to hurt your voice. Oh, yes. So the hermit crab uses any shell or cover he can find to act as his backbone, even if it means fighting for it. Flame shells are kind of lucky then, I guess. They've got two shells each. So heroic hermit is connected to the floppy flame shell we saw earlier through their shell. So let's take a look back over our spineless sea sensations. <laughs> We've gone all the way from the sea squirt to the home-loving hermit crab. How did we get here? First up, the sea squirts. Now, uh, experts say they're related to humans, but I can't see the resemblance. They are connected to our not-so-cool cucumbers. Flexible, but... <laughs> they are linked to our shells, which are slow... ..and boring. ..and sometimes venomous. But what about the funny flappy flame shell? Oh, so emotional. Yeah, but not so French. Linked, of course, by their shell to the hermit crab. <laughs> so, what have you got for me here? Uh, I'm waiting. The arrow crab. And Q crab. He's there. You need to look properly. Uh, nope, not seeing anything. OK, I guess we'll have to go closer. Hey, wait, now, now that is not a crab. That's a spider. Hey, if that was a spider, I would not be sat here now. I'd be on a plane back to the UK. It's a crab. What kind of crab looks like that? It does look like a spider. Yeah, it does, but it's much nicer. It has ten spider-like legs, but not many other similarities to either spiders or crabs. It doesn't walk like other crabs either. No, arrow crabs are very slow, and they don't have the defence mechanisms that other crabs have, like no real armour. That is weird. Another bizarre, backboneless wonder. Right then, my turn. <laughs> testing, testing, Barney to spiny crayfish. Incoming transmission has been detected. Those must be the biggest antennae in the world! Well, relatively speaking, Gem, they are. They have antennae as long as their bodies. But that's not their only weird body bit. Listen to this for a strange set of parts. They have a body armour, eyes on stalks, six small limbs around the mouth, five pairs of legs and um, a fan on the bottom. What? And yet, they kind of look OK. That is one freaky body. Imagine if you had to walk around looking like that. While they have many talents, they use their antennae and legs to taste and fend off predators. Their other party trick is their ability to regrow bits of their body. That is just amazing. If they get in a fight and lose a leg or two, they can get by until it's time to molt again and then they just grow another one. Ah, yes, another one with a suit of armour. Just like the arrow crab, so they must be related. They are. They belong to the same family as crabs, the crustaceans. <laughs> And what on earth is connected to an arrow crab? Oh, hey, ocean hedgehogs. The spiniest creature in the reef by far. These are sea urchins. Spiniest but spineless. And spectacularly useful. OK, so they're not movers and shakers, these guys, but those spikes are like very sharp needles and contain a toxin. So if we stood on one, it would be rather painful. <laughs> Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's a ball of spikes. OK, moving on. No, they're much more complicated than that, Barney. They have an external skeleton and this bit here... Yeah, that's the eye. Uh, no, that is their, um, poo bag. What? <laughs> the bag is there to hold their poo so they don't suck it in again with the surrounding water because that would be rather horrible. Uh, yeah, they're definitely moving on. These guys are like the bodyguards of the reef. A perfect place for these cardinal fish to hide from predators. I mean, who's going to try and eat them when they might get a painful spike stuck in them? That's a good point. <laughs> good point. Get it? <laughs> As I was saying, they're ocean protectors, but they also have to hitch a ride with the carrier crab, albeit somewhat reluctantly, when the crab decides they need a bodyguard. Portable bodyguards. That's it! So these are serious spikes, definitely up there with our spiny crayfish. So sea urchins are connected to our spiny crayfish through their spiky spines. Very sharp. Sharp. Get it? <laughs> <laughs>
It's El Spanish Dancer. Ole. Sorry. Uh, meet our Spanish dancer, Nudibrank. Pretty in pink with its own shrimp accessory. Hang on. Is this another shrimp cleaning? What is it with these shrimps? They need to get out more. It is indeed having a little clean, Jemsy Poos, but the shrimp is mainly getting a free nosh-up. It's basically the ocean version of Meals on Wheels. Ah, these shrimps are well crafty. But doesn't the nudie brank mind? No. By nibbling on him, the shrimp does help keep him clean and free from parasites. And the nudie brank also keeps the shrimp safe from predators. So the shrimp gets a free ride, protection and a free meal. <laughs> nice work if you can get it. I'll say one thing. It's hard to find a lazy shrimp in the ocean world for something so tiny and without a backbone. They're hard grafters with many tannins. So the sea urchin provides a hiding place and the shrimp uses the nudibranch to travel around. So our imperial shrimp links to the sea urchin because they both pair up with their spineless buddies. <laughs> So, who's our next spiny sea lover? Our next spineless wonder is everywhere. The biggest and most dominant animal colony in the reef, the corals. Ah, yes. This is where lots of little polyps work together to create one big living animal. Which then becomes a house and protects loads of reef creatures. So, coral is the ultimate spineless contender, like a massive team of spineless creatures joined together as one. Ah, oh, yes. A spineless united. <laughs> Hang on, what are all those little balls? That's like an ocean snowstorm. Well, this is one of the most wondrous sights in the ocean. Wow! It's called coral spawning. It only happens once a year, and no one really knows why, but it's mainly dependent on the full moon. Well, it's very pretty, but what is it? Well, it's basically the coral laying eggs into the water. It's quite spooky, really. On that one day, most coral decide to spawn within a few hours of each other, and some even at exactly the same time. Do, 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 do. And that's why the reefs keep on living. All because the moon, sun, tides and corals somehow let each other know it's spawning time. an amazing ability to conquer, settle and outgrow. And spawning is a large part of that process. Now that is one spineless wonder. <laughs> Beat that, Barney. Well, hang on a second. What's the link back to the Imperial Shrimp? Well, they both wear their skeleton on the outside. So our coral is linked to our sneaky shrimps by their external skeletons. So let's go over those connections. Right you are, it's time to recap our spineless wonders. So our hermit crab is linked to our arrow crab, who is connected to our extra spiny crayfish with his amazing antennae. Yeah, but he's just a tiny spiny compared to the sea urchins with their ultra-long spines. They're a perfect shelter for their little ocean buddies. Talking of buddies, what about the shrimp and some of his shrimp mates? Who hitch a ride on the nudie branks and the cucumbers. Off you go! Okay. Whose external skeleton links him to the ocean's very own Spineless United Coral. <laughs> the weirdest worms in the world. These are Christmas tree worms. Aww, they're a bit shy. These cheeky spineless critters burrow their way into the coral and live there, popping up to have a nosy at what's going on, knowing they can pop back down into the safety of the coral whenever they please. And I'm guessing they must be linked to our coral because they live in the coral skeleton. Correct, Amundo, do that. Right, bring on our next connection. Awesome. <laughs> Ah, nudibranchs, I remember them. So, they're related to the Spanish dance that we saw earlier, then. Oh, that one's cool. I want that one. Jam, they're slugs. No way. Yes way. This reef place is weird, remember? These geezers are sea slugs. Hello. Ooh, now slugs 
I don't like, but these guys are pretty. Maybe I can just make an exception. All right, well, what if I told you they are flesh-eating slugs? Barney, have you been watching bad sci-fi films again? Yeah, but that's not the reason I'm saying it. See, you think they're so pretty. Listen to the facts. Brace yourself. These spineless slugs eat other spineless animals just like them. They can eat jellyfish, anemone, corals... They don't look fierce enough. And then they absorb bits of the creature they've eaten to use for their own self-defence. Huh? Eh? Well, for example, they might gulp down a sea anemone but are able to use the sting of the anemone to protect themselves or borrow toxins from the other animals, like sponges, that help make themselves taste really, really bad. Some of them even eat other sea slugs. Oh, double yuck. They're cannibals. This show just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Yep, so it's another spineless partnership. The shy Christmas tree worm hides in the equally spineless coral and the nudibranch steals the sting from spineless anemones. So our nudibranch and Christmas tree worms are connected because they make good use of their spineless cousins. <laughs> Who's this then? He looks like he's at a pop concert. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. He looks like he's swaying to a very romantic song. This is a solar-powered nudibranch. Hang on a minute. <laughs> We've just had nudibranch. That's cheating. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, there's nothing in the programme rules about having the same type of animal. Mm, not convinced. This better be good. Hang on. Solar-powered? But buildings are solar-powered, not sea creatures. Ah, but Jem, remember, the sea came first. Ah. Creatures like this are the originators of solar power. And now for the science. Uh oh. Remember our friends, the zooxanthellae? Of course. Well, they're tiny little plants, and like all plants, they take energy from the sun and turn it to food. The solar-powered nudie keeps loads of these little plants in its body. See the gold spots all over it? Well, that's the zooxanthellae. But I still don't get the solar-powered bit. Elaborate, please, Dr Barnacle. Seeing as you ask so nicely, I would love to. The algae converts the sun's energy into sugar, which the nudibranch uses as food. It's like the nudibranch has its own little greenhouse in its body. So those gold spots are like mini solar power panels? That's correct, my dear Gemma. Ah, OK. Well, I'll forgive your little double nudibranch cheat, then. Only once you've explained the connection, of course. Well, that's easy. The link between the standard nudibranchs and the solar-powered nudibranchs is that both of them pinch useful things from other animals to survive. <laughs> Is it a fish? Is it a squid? No, it's the one and only Super Octopus. The spectacular spineless superhero. Well, OK, so he moves well with cool colour changes and all that, but can he really be called a superhero? Oh, absolutely. Take a look at this. Uh, yeah, he's a cool mover, all right, but I'm still not convinced. OK, be prepared to change your mind. Here are the octopus's superpowers. Superpower number one. The octopus has super vision. They have a super lens that allows them to change their range of vision, a bit like an inbuilt camera. Ah! Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Superpower number two. Octopi are highly intelligent. They've been known to solve puzzles and can actually tell the difference between shapes and sizes. It's got bits of brain in its arms as well as in its head. Superpower number three. An octopus is strong and agile. They've been known to squeeze into things much smaller than them, like this cola bottle here. Wow, that's more like it. That is a proper superpower. Superpower number four. Octopuses have a beak made out of super hard material. On some species, this can be used to kill prey and bite them into pieces. Some even have deadly venom, like the blue ringed octopus here. Wow, and I thought they were just comical wobbly things. Superpower, Superpower number, number one, two, three, four, five. They can release a thick black ink at the drop of a hat. This confuses their enemies and dulls their smell so they can escape. <laughs> 
unharmed. Wow, like a smoke screen. That's well cool. Okay, I totally agree. The octopus is a spineless superhero with many tricks up his sleeves. <laughs> tricks up his sleeves. <laughs> He's got loads of arms. Oh, dear. The Nudie and their solar superpower and Octopus with their countless superpowers are connected by spineless superpower fragilistic... Ex I'm sorry. What an ending to our spectacular spineless collection. And the Octopus connects back to the spineless sea squirt through its spectacular water squirting ability. So, let us take one last look <laughs> through our spineless superheroes. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep, in the ocean, no spine is no problem. We started with the sea squirt, the strangest human cousin I've ever come across. Who links to the squashy shrinking sea cucumber. <laughs> because neither of them have any armour to protect themselves. Like our soft-bodied slow-coach snails, but at least they have their shell to screen themselves from danger. And what about the glamorous flim shell? So funny and flappy. Not to mention the hermit crab, they go to war over a shell. That's my shell. No, it's my shell. My shell. It's my shell. My shell. What's my shell got to do with it? At least they have a shell. Our weird spidery arrow crabs have to rely on blending in to stay alive. The spiny crayfish has the coolest spineless accessories. A super long antennae and an external skeleton. Call those spines. Now these are spines. The sea urchin allows its ocean friends to hide in its super long spikes. Shh, you can't see me. I'm hiding in the spikes. Just like the Imperial Shrimp and the rest of his mates, hitching a ride on the Spanish Dancer Mobile. And the Spineless United Coral. With such a big external skeleton, who needs a backbone? Well, not the Christmas tree worm, that's for sure, when they have their protector, the coral, to hide in. But some spineless wonders have to look after themselves, like the nudibranchs who nick toxins and stings from other animals to protect themselves. Cool, but not as cool as the solar-powered nudibranch, who has a little plant living inside, providing regular meals to keep his energy levels up. The nudie is connected to the octopus through his solar spineless superpower, who is surely the most sensational spineless superhero. So our flexible wonders prove that in the ocean, spineless can mean super spectacular. A bit like me, really. No, nothing like you. Like our real spineless superheroes. Well, I must be off. People to save and all that. Up, up, and away! <laughs> so, we'll see you next time for more watery wonders on Barney's Barrier Reef.